keep pressing it's gone blue and now it's flashing there we go and then it's the name of the device so wave my hand over the sensor and there you go so now we need some functions to turn the light on run it and see it's turn off hooray there we go if there is occupancy if there's someone in the room we turn the light on and then when that person leaves we're going to turn the light off light turns off and i'm going to wave my hand in front of the sensor light turns on and there we go lights turned off hello and welcome to ben's electrical escapades uh if you've been following along you'll know that i have been using python and a package called Papahu, Papahu, um, to communicate with an MQTT broker. Um, we've been turning lights on and off. Um, you can see the little eye up here or up here. You can go and see those videos. And today, and we've been, uh, what else have we doing? We've been subscribing to uh, topics. And today we'll be bringing that all together by subscribing to the topics of a sensor and using that to turn the light on or off, depending on what it's sensing. Um, should be fun and let's get going. So for a change today I thought we'd start from the very beginning. Um, ignore the error messages, that's it, just trying to connect to lights which are turned off. Um, uh, by showing you how we connect the sensor to Zigbee to MQTT. So this, again this is running on a Pi. Um, you have to get an antennae to uh, receive the Zigbee messages. Um, so first we need to pair the sensor. So this is the sensor and as you can see here there's a little hole there so i'm going to permit things to join the network there's now a nine network i'm going to hold this button here keep pressing it keep pressing it oh i should show you what i'm doing keep pressing it. it's gone blue and now it's flashing there we go devices are now joining you can see at the bottom here here it, here it is and it's joined okay so now this is on the network I'm just going to put that over here for now and I'm going to edit it and I'm going to call it sensor slash not exactly sure where it's going to go yet so I'm just going to call it new for now rename I'm going to see sensor new and the other thing I'm going to do is make it 30 seconds keep time so what this does is this just means that after it detects movement it will reset back to there's no movement after 30 seconds of no movement. Um, this is just because whilst we're debugging and testing, it can be annoying if we have to wait for like a minute before it um, goes back to unoccupied. Uh, so there we go. That's now connected to the Zigbee network. So this is the code where we left off from the last video. We were last time using MQTT Explorer to send messages, which were being received by the broker and then calling this function uh, but now we'll be using messages sent by the sensor okay the first thing to do is to make this false now this just means we connect to the pi rather than to the local broker otherwise we won't be receiving the messages uh, we then need to subscribe to the topic now the base the topic all the Zigbee MQTT topics have that have this um, to start, and then it's the name of the device. So there you go. That will give us that will subscribe to them the uh, messages. And now let's run it and see what happens. Okay, so there's nothing there, as expected. I'm now going to wave my hand over the sensor. And there you go. We get uh, the topic because we printed the topic and we get the payload. As you can see, it's JSON um, with the key value, key value pair being here, occupancy true. Now I've got quite a different, I've got quite a various uh, selection of uh, sensors. This one is a generic AliExpress. It costs five pounds or something. Um, actually pretty good. I've got the Akara um, P1 or something. Uh, and they all generally have this occupancy field that goes to true when it senses something and false once it's decided that it's clear. Um, so now we need to work with this JSON. So let's go back. Okay, I've been trying to run it for a bit 
and it's not been working. What's been happening is we've been getting the first message, but there are no other messages and having a bit of a Google A and I've found that the loop starts, starts it in a separate thread and seems much more reliable than loop forever. Um, so we're going to have to do something slightly horrible just to get this working. Um, on my lights here at home, I'm just going to have to write a statement. On my lights here at home, I'm running on a Flask um, web, what's it called? Server. Um, and so I don't have this problem. I don't actually use the on message because the server is continually running. And so this is continually running. Um, so this is an interesting problem. But we got there in the end and we've got a stupid little hack. And what what is there? When is coding not coding if there is no not a hack? So let's know. Oh, now you can see all my errors that I've been having. Hooray. So that now we can run the code. And I'm going to wave my hand in front of the sensor. And we see there is a hand. Oh, I was printing still the topic of the payload. Okay, so now we have to wait 30 seconds. Hooray, there we go. Oh, there is a hand. For some reason it's sense. Oh, there we go. It's kind of weird. It sent the message twice. It's like it was sending it just before it reset. But still, no worry, that won't actually change anything. Um, it's kind of weird though, but there we go. Anyway. Um, Alright, so now we can see there is a hand, there is a hand, there is no hand. Just for like, now we're kind of happy. I'm going to get rid of those printing. So now we need some functions to turn the light on. Turn light on. Now I'm going to be a bit nausea here and just use the client like this. Really, it should be passed in or something, but ain't nobody got time for that. So anyway, we're going to publish. Now, if you look, remember my last videos, the thing to publish is the topic of the light, which is the base SigBTQMT2 topic. And I've got mine as a light lounge, and then it's the set topic. And then we need the payload, which is state nope speech marks there state this is on so we need on close you can use this dictionary and um put it to json but i never quite find that reliable different uh devices need different types of json and so i found it just easier just to write my own in the string format and so here we're going to do it off so i'm just going to copy this whole thing and change this to off okay uh so that looks good i think state state off on, on. yep okay to check it i'm just going to down here turn light off so when we run it, it should turn the light off. Okay, I've repositioned the camera a bit, so hopefully you can see the light. Um, let's run it and see it's turn off. Hooray, there we go. Cool. I'm going to cancel that and turn it on. Oops, cancel the problem. There we go, cool. So the functions are working, and now you can guess, it's fairly easy. If there is occupancy, if there's someone in the room, we're going to turn the light on. And then when that person leaves, we're going to turn the light off. So here we go, the big finale, which cancel, 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 clear the screen. One thing. Before we start, we're going to turn the light off when we turn it on. When we start the script, uh, turn the light off. Okay, so we're going to run the script, turn the, the light's going to turn off. 
So let's, here we go. Light turns off. And I'm going to wave my hand in front of the sensor. Light turns on. Now we have to wait 30 seconds. And there we go. Light's turned off. Wave my hand again. Light turns on. And there we have it. Okay, so that's that's it. That's controlling the lights with the sensor. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'm going to be thinking of some more coding things we can do. Again, this is quite hacky. Um, it's just a simple script that you can use to uh, as a base to, to get going. As I said before, I've run mine with a Flask web server with a front end that you can control everything with. Um, but there you go. The basics. It's fun. Uh, you have fun. Oh, light's gone off. Wave. See, there's the problem. You need to make sure the sensors are put in the right places to catch the people, to catch the movement. Um, the MMM wave technology that's coming is uh, much more sensitive and is much better. But for now, these will do. I find they work best in corridors because that's when you have people coming in and out, but less so in rooms where people are sitting, like the lounge, for example. Um, anyway, uh, that's it for me. Okay, so just a quick thing at the end of this video. My wife has bet me that I can't get to 20 subscribers by the end of the year. So if you've got this far, please consider subscribing. Then I get to get a MMM wave sensor. Hooray!